Hello, and welcome to the Drug Life Cycle Minute. I'm your host, Philip Day. My guest today is Dr. Mukesh Kumar, the Chief Innovation Officer of Drug Life Cycle DLTA. Hello, Dr. Kumar. Hi, Philip. Nice well, to good seeing you every week, and uh, we've got we've got, of course, another interesting topic. Our topic today it, it gets down a little deeper in that we're going to talk about the people who manage and run clinical trials. Uh, we don't we always think about the patients. We think about um, who are involved in clinical trials. We think about the medicines, of course, that come from these trials but we don't think a lot about who's running them and who is involved all along the chain. So today, let's, let's talk first about the clinical project managers. Who are these people anyway? Well, clinical project managers are professionals who manage these trials and they are trained in all aspects of clinical trials. They are trained in the laws that control clinical trials, they also are trained in project management, some basic uh, you know, aspects of project management, such as budgeting, such as coordinating large teams, uh, various kinds of documentation that you need to create to run a project. So these are people who are highly trained to run trials. And uh, uh, for each trial, there is at least one of them who leads the entire team. Uh, there could be more depending on the size of the project, but usually there will be one project manager or program manager who would be responsible for the running of the entire trial. Okay. Well, considering all that, it, there has to be some kind of certificate or degree that one of these that these managers has to has to possess. Is that correct? Well, uh, there is no FDA required certificate, so FDA doesn't require any certificate. Anybody can manage a trial and many people managing trials do not have a, any specific certificates. They have a lot of experience and training in different aspects and they do all kinds of courses. Um, so there is no one course, uh, but there are several programs to train people in clinical research, uh, in project management and everything else in between. So uh, there is no one certificate, there are several of them, uh, but most of the people running trials uh, would be, uh, you know, would be training, would be doing based on how much experience they have with running that trial. So uh, it's not that they have to have a degree, like you don't need a degree, like like a degree you would need to treat someone. You need to be a doctor or you need to be a lawyer to represent someone in a court. There is no such thing for clinical trials. Uh, you know, anybody can run a trial so long as they have the competency uh, to run a trial. Okay. Well, Considering that, I mean, you've got you've got teams that, as you said, we, there's a team that does clinical trials. Is there a, a certain number for these project teams? It could be a very large team. So typically, project, uh, you know, even for a small phase one clinical trial, it could easily be about seven to ten people. Uh, most trials, you know, uh, phase one trials are really the smallest of small trials, but phase two or phase three trials, which are larger trials, could involve uh, 50, 60, 100 people teams. Um, so if it's a large multinational program, you could easily have about 50, 60 people uh, that are reporting to you directly. So that becomes, you know, depending on the size of the trial, your teams are larger or smaller, as would be obvious. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and they could be spread across uh, the country, spread across the globe, depending on where the sites are. So these teams get to be pretty, pretty large, uh, you know, wow. for many trials. And so communication and strong communication is very important when you're in different locations and remote locations, all that kind of thing? Absolutely, absolutely. So project managers spend, you know, more than half of their time just communicating, you know, just chasing people, going after people, trying to find out what happened and where and what's, what's on schedule, what's behind schedule, what's, what's, in, what's ongoing, what has been completed and needs to go to the next person. So there is a lot of, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, management aspect of project uh, that project managers spend. So there is an average project manager would spend about uh, more than half of their time just writing emails, uh, status emails, finding out, you know, what's happening and where. So just getting status reports uh, takes, you know, more than half of their time. 
Uh, and then, of course, there are, you know, jobs that are responsible for. So it's a pretty busy job. So really the bottom line is we, as we close our show today, it really rises, clinical trials rise and fall on the project manager. If you have a project manager who is not very good at details um, or communications, there could be trouble. Well, you could not have said it better. Uh, it really hinges on the project manager and to some extent the rest of his team, his or her team. Uh, but yes, I mean, you know, project managers, good project managers, good experienced project managers are able to perform better because they know what to look for, what to, what to prevent the study from. Uh, but obviously, you know, if they're doing everything manually, it takes more risk and more, uh, more issue because even the most experienced Mm -hmm. Project managers can't remind, can't remember everything, so people forget and people you know make mistakes. Uh, they omit something, so those things happen because a lot of project managers still use a lot of manual tools. It all rises and falls on leadership. Dr. Kumar, thank you so much for joining us, and I want to thank our audience for joining us for the Drug Lifecycle Minute. You can find out more about us at www.druglifecycle.com. Like us on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Take control with DLTA and have a healthy day. Bye-bye.